One of the most interesting unacknowledged aspects of the battle for the Iron Throne between Aegon and Rhaenyra is that one of the largest contributing factors to this chasm between the claimants and the desire to undermine Rhaenyra's claim actually doesn't stem from Rhaenyra herself, but is based on Daemon Targaryen. Most of the elements of Daemon Targaryen's personality that make him enjoyable as a character make him terrible as a leader or ruler. And it's obvious that nearly every character in House of the Dragon and Fire and Blood recognizes that Daemon is a threat to the realm. And the more power that he has, the more dangerous he can become. Succession laws in Westeros are messy and weakly defined to begin with. So Viserys and Emma's constant pregnancy losses and Rhaenyra emerging as their only surviving child presented a problem for a very long time because it left the potential succession to the Iron Throne up in the air. George R. R. Martin himself has discussed succession laws in Westeros many times, and in a blog post he summed up what the issue is with Rhaenyra as heir prior to Viserys' second marriage pretty succinctly. He says, After the sons, most would say that the eldest daughter is next in line, but there might be an argument from the dead man's brothers, say. Does a male sibling or a female child take precedence? Each side has a claim. So while there's a somewhat vague presumption that Rhaenyra would have been the heir after Viserys, it's not as clear as it would be in other circumstances because Viserys has a living male sibling. And this particular situation is complicated by the decision of the Great Council to make Viserys king in the first place. The succession crisis that faced Jaehaerys Targaryen is one that is somewhat hard to follow, but it essentially breaks down like this. Although Jaehaerys and Alysanne had many children, the two relevant sons in this situation are Aemon, the elder son, and Balon, the younger son. Both of these children were named heirs of Jaehaerys, and both died before they could take the throne. After their deaths, the succession became unclear, and Jaehaerys convened the Great Council to decide who was going to inherit the throne. While many claimants came forward, two were seen as the most viable candidates. Aemon's daughter Rhaenys argued that her son Laenor should inherit the throne, and Balon's son Viserys argued that he should inherit. Based on primogeniture alone, Aemon was the elder brother, ergo he should have the stronger claim. But unfortunately, it was his daughter making that claim on the behalf of her son. On the other hand, Balon was Jaehaerys' younger son, but the throne would pass directly through an entirely male branch of the bloodline, and was one generation less removed from Jaehaerys, as he was Jaehaerys' grandson while Laenor was his great-grandson. In no great surprise, Viserys wound up winning the vote and he ultimately became king. And while his sex wasn't the only motivating factor behind that victory, it was undeniably a significant one. Ergo, although Rhaenyra may have had a vague claim to the throne over Daemon, it was hardly a lock in her favor. And it didn't help that her father had literally been installed as king largely because he was a man and Rhaenys was a woman. And this is where Rhaenyra becoming his declared heir comes into play. While there is wisdom in doing something to avoid any succession crisis going forward, it's undeniable that the primary driving force behind Rhaenyra becoming Viserys' named heir is Daemon Targaryen. And, while Otto Hightower may have been leading the charge in ensuring that Daemon would never take the Iron Throne, it's also clear that many lords in Westeros would not want someone as unpredictable, violent, and dangerous as Daemon on the Iron Throne. However, for all of Daemon's flaws, his relationship with his brother seems to be a good one. Fire and Blood doesn't really delve into their personal connection, but House of the Dragon makes it obvious that they love each other. And the very fact that Daemon never tried to usurp his brother in the book does lend credence to the idea that his brother mattered to him more than the Iron Throne. Ergo, Viserys was reluctant to pick a team between Daemon and Rhaenyra for quite a while. Of course, Daemon's bad behavior and apathy towards the death of Viserys' wife and son was the breaking point, and Viserys finally agreed to name Rhaenyra as his heir. However, it is important to remember that firstly, Rhaenyra became named heir because Viserys had no living sons at that time, and because Daemon was seen by many as a threat to the realm and needed to be kept away from the Iron Throne, which are conditions that both change as time goes on. Obviously, the sexist aspect of the belief that Aegon would ultimately be named heir is undeniable, but it's also understandable from the point of view that this is simply how things work in Westeros. Most of the lords were expecting the line of succession to change once Viserys had a trueborn son, because according to their customs, trueborn sons take precedence over nearly anyone else. Which is exactly why Viserys spent so long trying and failing to have a son with Emma Arryn in the first place. But as we all know now, Viserys did not change his declared intention for the succession, and Rhaenyra remained his heir until he died. And although Daemon's role in this whole succession mess is often overlooked, it's truly one of the most important aspects of the entire Dance of the Dragons. 
again, given that Damon never hurt Viserys or Rhaenyra when he had plenty of opportunities to. It's undeniable that he loved them both on some level. Or at the very least, he cared more about them than he cared about the Iron Throne. But his desire for the Iron Throne never waned. And it was clearly a motivating factor in the way that he behaved around Rhaenyra going forward. In House of the Dragon, elements of this conflict are even more directly stated. Towards the end of the first episode, when Viserys informs Daemon that Rhaenyra will be officially made Princess of Dragonstone, Daemon directly states that he is Viserys' heir. Despite the fact that Viserys had gone out of his way to dodge the issue, it's obvious that Daemon was operating under the assumption that he was next in line for the throne. And it's safe to extrapolate that a great deal of the men in power presume the same thing. Once Rhaenyra is declared heir, Daemon takes pretty active steps to undermine her credibility, as well as to attempt to unite their claims and recapture his believed power over the Iron Throne. Taking Rhaenyra out for a night of wild fun is directly stated as an attempt to ruin Rhaenyra's reputation in order to make Daemon's chances of marrying her much higher. So while he might genuinely love her, he has also been grooming her since she was a teenager, likely for this exact purpose. Regardless of circumstances, marrying Rhaenyra was clearly Daemon's best shot at ever getting to the Iron Throne. Ironically, Daemon's political machinations succeeded where Otto's failed, as Otto suggests marrying Rhaenyra to Aegon for this exact same reason. In a scenario where the succession is not as clear as it should be, claims are always going to be strengthened by uniting. So although Daemon was intentionally placed behind Rhaenyra in inheritance, marrying the woman that he was skipped in favor of basically puts him in an even stronger claimant position than he was in to start with. However, it understandably puts Rhaenyra in a weaker one. What makes this so relevant to the Dance of the Dragons is that not only was Rhaenyra's claim on shaky ground even before Viserys had true-born sons, but the entire driving force behind her being named as heir in the first place is completely destroyed by her marrying Daemon. The people pushing Rhaenyra forward as heir weren't doing it for Rhaenyra, but were mostly doing it because she wasn't Daemon. I don't want to understate the importance of the fact that Rhaenyra was largely manipulated into this relationship with Daemon, but the end result is the same. Given Westeros' intense misogyny, it's obvious that Daemon would have far more power as king consort than a queen consort would have. And in the eyes of many, he'd be the true ultimate power of the realm. Ergo, it's not particularly surprising that many people were plotting against Rhaenyra taking the Iron Throne for years before Viserys was even dead. And there's a pretty fair argument that could be made in their favor, because Daemon would be a terrible king and many of the people who were plotting against Rhaenyra would almost certainly die if Daemon were ever in control of the Iron Throne. It's not lacking in irony that Otto Hightower was the primary driving force behind Rhaenyra being declared Princess of Dragonstone, and was then the primary driving force behind destroying her claim. But it's also not very surprising given that the real purpose behind both of these actions is the same. There's clearly a personal element to the rivalry between Otto and Daemon, but in terms of what is broadly better for everyone, it's hard to deny that Otto was almost certainly correct about Daemon being unfit to rule. But once Daemon and Rhaenyra are married, Otto's personal feelings about either of them basically become irrelevant, because it's a guarantee that if Rhaenyra does become queen and Daemon does become king, Otto will die. And he has good reason to suspect that most of his family will die as well. And although House of the Dragon doesn't delve into this too deeply, he's hardly the only one who would find themselves in this situation if Daemon became king. Again, there's an element of Daemon who clearly cares for Rhaenyra. Because again, if he wanted the Iron Throne at all costs, then it wouldn't have been too difficult to usurp her. But it's also disingenuous to assume that he is one of Rhaenyra's supporters. There may be genuine love there, but marriages in Westeros are almost always political. And the political motivations behind Daemon's actions seem to be incredibly obvious. He is the king's brother, and in any normal scenario, he would not inherit over the king's son. Therefore, his only opportunity to become king is to marry Rhaenyra and support her claim which is a plot that he spends literal years building up towards. And make no mistake, he is not doing this because he desperately wants Rhaenyra to become queen. He's doing it because he recognizes that this presents a real chance for him to be king. Yes, he is outwardly supporting Rhaenyra's claim, but he almost certainly recognizes that the entirely male-controlled power structure of Westeros will defer to him over her if they take the Iron Throne. So essentially, Daemon is also trying to usurp Rhaenyra's power. At the end of season one, House of the Dragon pretty clearly alludes to this reality as well. While Rhaenyra is in dire straits and desperate for Daemon's help or comfort, 
He is taking complete control of the situation and making plans as if they're all his decisions to make. There may be an element of pragmatism to these actions, but they also indicate the very real possibility that Damon does not, nor has he ever intended, to be taking the orders of his niece for the rest of his life because his now-dead brother commanded him to. Of course, there are complexities to this situation beyond just the political machinations of Daemon Targaryen's ultimate goal to claim the Iron Throne for himself. But it's clear that a lot of Daemon's manipulations and his role in the Dance of the Dragons are often overlooked in ways that they really shouldn't be. Not only was he the genesis for Rhaenyra's declared inheritance in the first place, he also spent years of his life grooming her in order to circumvent that declaration as well and a massive amount of the anti rhaenyra contingent who begins fighting to prevent her from taking the Iron Throne are specifically motivated by Daemon and not her. Given that he marries her and maintains that marriage rather than pulling a Rhea Royce, it's obvious that he would rather have Rhaenyra alive than dead. But he's far from her advocate or on her team, because he undoubtedly recognizes that his marriage to her would weaken her position and prevent her from making a marriage alliance that would actually be beneficial in a broader sense. Ironically, the fact that he marries her pretty clearly demonstrates that he's working towards his own political advancement and not hers. That's not to say that Rhaenyra is just a helpless groomed puppet in Daemon's favor, either. She clearly has feelings for him, and there is undoubtedly a political advantage to marrying another dragon rider that she would recognize. However, broadly speaking, this is an arrangement that heavily favors Daemon, and he knows it, which is why he spent so long orchestrating it to begin with. And in most instances, the benefits that he reaps from it are to Rhaenyra's disadvantage. Not to mention the fact that this is all almost certainly a part of a plan to usurp Rhaenyra's power in all but name anyway. Certainly, Rhaenyra and the fact that she is a woman is a contributing factor to why some rebelled against her or acted to prevent her from taking the Iron Throne. But to ignore Daemon Targaryen's role in creating this succession crisis is absurd. And to presume that Daemon is acting in Rhaenyra's interests is a willful denial of most of the realities of the situation. In the eyes of most, Rhaenyra's declaration as Princess of Dragonstone and the denial of her claim in the later years is not caused by Rhaenyra at all, but is specifically aimed at keeping Daemon out of power. And in the eyes of Daemon, a great deal of what he does that is supposedly in service of Rhaenyra's queenship is actually motivated by his own desire to become king. But what do you think? Is Daemon planning on usurping Rhaenyra if she ever takes the throne? Leave your comments and opinions below. And if you're interested in more content like this, like and subscribe.